I'm using today. I'm starting with a nice big piece of corned beef. This is a corned beef round and I got it at Costco. It's a really good quality. And this is almost four pounds. I'm also using two large potatoes, one onion, a smallish head of cabbage. We don't usually go through a lot of cabbage so a small one is fine for us. And then I have a couple of carrots. And I'm also gonna be using about four cups of beef broth. Now you could also use uh, beer if you'd prefer, but I prefer broth. I'm going to start by topping my onion into quarters. I'm gonna set my onions aside and get my corned beef prepared. I wanna get it out of the packaging and give it a nice rinse. I'm going to start by adding my onions to the wire rack inside my Instant Pot. And then I'm going to rest my corned beef on top of them, fatty side down. Next, I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of powdered garlic all over my meat. And I'm also going to sprinkle in the seasoning packet that came with the corned beef. And now it's time for the broth. Now, like I said, you could use beer if that's what you prefer. I'm just using four cups of beef broth. So I'm gonna get it right in there. I'm gonna go ahead and put the lid on. I'm gonna make sure to turn my vent to seal. Next, I'm going to press manual and set my timer for 90 minutes. While my corned beef is cooking, I'm gonna go ahead and prepare my carrots, my potatoes, and my cabbage. And as you can tell, I've left my carrots into pretty large size chunks. That way I'm not left with carrot mush when I'm done cooking this. I'm gonna do the same thing with the potatoes. Now, as you can tell with the potatoes, I went ahead and left the skin on, but if you'd like to, you can totally peel your potatoes. I just decided to keep this easy and rustic. Next up is the cabbage. I'm just going to quarter it. When the time is up, I'm going to very carefully turn my vent to allow for a quick release of pressure. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and take out the corned beef and place it into a dish. I'm also gonna make sure to reserve about two cups of the broth. Next, I'm going to add in my potatoes, my carrots, and my cabbage. I'm gonna put my lid back on and turn my vent to seal. Next, I'm going to press manual and set my timer for three minutes. Next, I'm going to brush off the spices that I put on top because I don't like to eat those. And I'm also going to trim any excess fat. Next, my sweet husband helped me out here by slicing it up. And you wanna make sure to slice against the grain here. Doesn't that look delicious? Next, he's going to remove the cabbage, the potatoes, and the carrots. We like to serve this family style. Now with the two cups of broth that we reserved, we're gonna go ahead and pour it all over the meat and the vegetables just to keep them nice and moist and flavorful. Now to go along with this, I also like to serve up a big slice of Irish soda bread. Now if you've never had this, it is really very tasty. I'll go ahead and put a link to a recipe in the description box below. And of course, I like to serve this up with some Kerrygold butter. And if you like things a little bit spicy, you could also add a little bit of horseradish sauce. Okay friends, hey guys, so today is St. Patrick's Day. So it's one of my favorite holidays because it's a day for us to celebrate our heritage and traditions. And basically um, it's for all of us Irish that are no longer in Ireland. Um, that's why we celebrate it. So in case you're wondering why the Irish are celebrating it if the people in Ireland don't really celebrate it as much. And this was actually started by our ancestors to basically bring the whole community together and support each other and have, you know, one day out of the year where we remembered our heritage. 
So today I thought that I would uh, show you guys what I'm making, uh, give you some recipes for it. Of course, I'm going to do something super cliche. So I'm going to make a corned beef and cabbage because that's an awesome Irish dish and a great uh, dish for celebrating today. For this recipe, you will need a packet of corned beef brisket with all the spices. I got mine from Whole Foods. A packet of baby carrots, an onion, a bag of small potatoes. I used a mix of these and a head of cabbage, of course. Okay guys, so this recipe, it was ridiculous how easy it was. I even considered not uploading this video because there really isn't much to it, but hey, who doesn't like an easy recipe? So I hope you like it. We're going to be making this in a slow cooker. First thing, you wanna cut up the potatoes in halves and cover the bottom of the cooker. Next, throw in the carrots, no need to cut them. Then cut up the onion. I'm the type of person that likes the flavor that onion brings to food, but usually I don't want to eat the onion, so I leave it in large pieces to pick it out, because I'm a child on the inside. Next, lay the meat out on top. Add four cups of water, or basically enough to cover the veggies. Cook on high for six to seven hours. Then add the cabbage to your cooker and cook for another 45 minutes on high. And then you're done. Simple, right? My entire family loves this recipe. My dad complimented me on it like eight times, so it was a winner. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe. Hello and welcome, Chef Pennington here. Today we're doing an Instant Pot Texas style. This is my first official video for doing Instapots, which we're going to be doing a bunch of them, all different kinds. But being from Texas, I thought, hey, let's go with brisket. That seems like a pretty tough one to cook. And honestly, the first couple of tries didn't work out that great. So I've pieced together everything I've done here, and I came out with a really good plan. So let's start by searing the meat. Just put a little oil on the bottom, something neutral like vegetable oil. Canola oil would work. I wouldn't use extra virgin olive oil or even olive oil. It's just a little strong of a flavor. And extra virgin olive oil, that wouldn't be the right application for it. So get them seared on all sides. Take your time. Um, with brisket, there's often a side that has a fat cap. You could cut that off or leave it on. I left it on. It's fat's flavor. Um, helps it while it's cooking. And when you put liquid in, uh, go for about two-thirds up the side. Um, there are times we'll braise where we'll only go halfway or even lower, and that makes sense. But since we're pressure cooking, that extra moisture in there helps protect our meat and helps be more moist at the end. So that's important. Um, you could also put tomato sauce in there, which would not be a Texas style at that point. But the tomatoes and the acid in there would tenderize the meat the whole time it cooks. So I'm a fan of that way. Um, something you could try. Liquid smoke. This is definitely where we get into the Texas style. We can't smoke this on the barbecue pit, so the liquid smoke, one cap full, does add a little bit of smokiness, which is really nice. I'm going to add a half a stick of butter in there. Uh, it's just going to help keep it moist while it's cooking, which is great, and butter is flavor, and we're butter in time, so we love butter. <laughs> so we're going to get the lid on, and make sure that you're set to sealing. And this is something, that, that part's easy. There's a couple different ways to release the pressure. Um, we're going to be doing what's called a natural release which we're going to get to in a moment. So we're going to go for an hour and a half here. We're setting it on high pressure and normal pressure. So it's high pressure cooking method, but there's three different settings. There's low, there's normal, and then there's high. So, or I think they call it more. <clears throat> so we're just doing the normal, which is great. And it worked out. So the tomato sauce there, the natural release is where when it's done cooking and the hour and a half is, you know, it's over with, you're going to see this. It's going to start counting that's a timer those are minutes that are clicking by and you can see how long it's been sitting there since the pressure cooker went off so you can really time in your food real really ex exact so we're going to wait 30 minutes you see that little hole right there that's how you know all the pressure's out so everything's safe once that's down you're good and you notice i took a little fork so i wouldn't get any hot heat and steam on myself and then one turn counterclockwise and we got some meat so let's take a look so we have two hours into this which two-hour brisket is unreal. Uh, brisket usually takes like 12 hours, eight hours. Not, not in the oven, but on a barbecue pit. 
So let's take a look here. This time right here, this was just with the dry rub and then some moist cooking liquid. And that is a really dull knife and it's still cutting through it like butter, which is great. 